Everyone, welcome today. We have to talk about a finance issue that is quickly approaching us all, and that's the debt ceiling. And considering there's a recent poll that just came out and said around 82% of Americans are very or somewhat worried that a government default would damage the economy, I wanna take a look at that. In this video, I wanna cover what debt defaults would mean for us, what it would mean for the economy, the housing market, the stock market, and, and more. Wall Street leaders are actually warning each other that the unthinkable fallout actually could happen. So if Wall Street is talking about it, I wanna make a video to let you know what this could mean for us all. And if you don't know what's happening with the debt ceiling, let me give you a 60 second rundown. The debt ceiling is a limit on how much the US government can borrow to pay its bills. The government actually hit this limit all the way back in January of this year, and now in order to pay their debts, their social security, and pay our military, they are basically relying on emergency funds and Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, has confirmed that the government will be completely out of these emergency funds by June 1st of this year, aka 17 days away. They call June 1st the X date because it's this nice and scary sounding name, but the X date is just the day that the government will run out of the dough. The situation has a lot of people concerned because we don't know how this will affect everything around us. So I did some research to find some different sources from different experts to hear what they think will happen if we default on our debt. Let's first look at the social security payments. And this is a big one because 67 million people are currently on the social security payment program. And if you don't know, the social security program provides income to primarily retired and disabled people. And every week, $25 billion is sent out as payment to those people. So if the government defaults on the debt and doesn't come up with a solution, then the social security payments will stop right in its tracks. So after the X date, when people go out to their mailboxes and they're looking for their social security check, it's just gonna be empty and they're gonna be SOL. Actually, 40% of social security recipients rely on social security for 90% of their income. Not only will these people no longer have an income, but they can't contribute to our GDP. So they can't pay their bills, they can't pay their gas bill, their car bill, their home loan. So this will increase repos in the area and home foreclosures will probably go up. But income could be delayed for more than just those who are on social security. For one example, federal employees and veterans will lose their benefits as well. So, so the 2 million federal workers and around 1.4 million active duty members would not see their paychecks on time. Really, the paychecks would still get to everyone eventually, but it just would come to how long will it take to get there? Will it take a week to get there? Will it take a month to get there? We just don't know. Now these 70 million people not receiving payments would be devastating because it could impact other areas as well. They won't be able to go out and eat, so those restaurants and other small businesses, they don't receive that money, AKA their employees also don't get paid. So I wanna point out that there's more consequences than we can see at face value. But if you don't directly fit in these categories, then how would this more affect you? Well, first off, a little disclaimer about the situation. I, I view it as more of a dynamic crisis, meaning that if we default one day over the X date, it won't be as bad as if we defaulted over a month over that X date. So this analysis by these people and institutions, in my opinion, are predicting more of a long-term uh, default. They're more predicting like a three-week default. So I'm gonna leave that up in the air for a little bit more interpretation. So first up is the stock market. Now this is a big one and it concerns me the most because I just wanna point out how much is actually integrated with the stock market. Not only will your Robinhood account with four Tesla shares and hit get hit, but company values across the world would just take huge hits right away. And retirement accounts will get hit, and then worst off, the public panic, which would probably hurt pretty much everything that you know. So I want you to think back to the Great Depression. Yeah, I know, very bad time. But first, the spark that led to the, all the downfall not was the crash of 1929 in which the stock market fell about 30% in a few days. Now in 2011, there was another debt ceiling standoff that was actually similar to the situation that we're in right now. And during this time, the stock market had the worst week since the financial crisis. So when I saw what some analysts have predicted, it really caught my attention. And I want you to remember that most retirement accounts are related to the stock market in some type of way. So, so when the market sees huge losses in value, people's retirement accounts are pretty much getting devastated at the same time. And according to Moody's analysis, they predicted that stocks could lose as much as one third of their value, wiping out about $12 trillion of household wealth. So another report has come out from the White House itself. And this one is really scary and it really puts it into perspective how serious this issue should be taken. The White House economists predict the stock market could fall as much as 45% during a protracted default. This is such a large drop that would almost likely put us into a depression scenario. Losses won't stop with the the stock market either. Pain will actually continue because borrowing costs will drastically increase. The yield on US treasuries have actually started and they will continue to keep rising. This will compensate for the increased risk that the bondholders are taking on because they're worried that the government won't repay their bonds back. So remember these treasury yields, they're gonna affect things like 
loan rates, and pretty much on everything like cars, credit cards, and even mortgages. This will be on top of the historically high interest rates that we're already seeing right now. It means families and businesses will have a harder time getting loans and loans that are also much more expensive. So if you thought mortgages were expensive now, well, we're not done yet because jobs in the economy would take a huge hit. Chief economist at Goldman Sachs confirmed that even coming close to a default in itself would cause a recession. And that's compounding on the problems that we're already seeing right now that is already predicted to put us into a recession. So it's like double. And Moody's analysts that say if a default lasts for a week, then it would cost close to 1 million jobs they think will be lost. And if it's dragged out to six weeks, then we can expect around 7 million jobs to be lost and the economy would decline by 4%. And to me, this is all kind of scary stuff because I think we're already in a pretty weak environment already or weak economy already. And Zillow experts say that the housing market will go into a deep freeze, meaning that sales could come crashing 23% following a US default, meaning that no one will want to buy a house creating this weird gap in the market. And what, what I don't like when things like this happen is the volume drops drastically. So that means it opens up the door for really big price movements. If a bunch of buyers come in or worst case scenario, a bunch of sellers come in on low volume, that could spell disaster for the housing market. Okay, but let's change subject and talk about better things and some, some much needed good news. First off, let's talk about how likely this is to actually happen. And my honest thought is, I don't know. Actually, no, I give it around a 25% chance of happening and we will most likely be okay. Both sides seem to recognize how severe these consequences are and both have been pretty motivated to work things out. But on the other hand, I've actually heard some crazy people saying that we should default, even some major leaders telling us to default, which just doesn't make any sense to me. History tells us though that everything will be okay and Congress will raise the debt ceiling. In fact, the 78 times that Congress has been in this position, the debt ceiling has been raised because at the end of the day, the consequences is much greater for everyone. But currently we're at a time and place that we just need to wait to see where things go. I, it's most likely that we don't see a default, but if we do, this could actually bring us some really incredible opportunities. We could look at all the downfalls if the stock market crashes and falls out of the sky and just destroys everything, but if we look on the bright side, this is a time that we could make some generational wealth. If everything is around you on sale, you might as well go pick up a good opportunity. And maybe, maybe the same thing happens in real estate too, as bad as I want it to happen. I just, I don't know. And all we can do is just prepare and maybe save some money just in case this does happen. But at the end of the day, it's hard to predict. And I want to make this quick video just showing of some of the, what other people are saying and predicting from analysts to show us how consequential this whole crisis could be. So like I said, we'll probably be fine, but I think it's better to be informed than just being ignorant. So I would like to thank you. If you found this video helpful or interesting, I would really appreciate a like and leave any comments or questions below and I will see you on the next one.